out of Georgia. The judge in Fulton County has just dismissed some of the charges in the Georgia election subversion case. And as Nick Valencia has been following all of this for us uh, diligently. Uh, Nick, what's the latest? What are you learning? Well, Jim, these are uh, charges that have to deal with the violation of an oath of office. So six of the 41 charges in this case have been thrown out by Judge Scott McAfee. And we want to be very clear. We don't want to confuse our viewers here as we anticipate and wait for his decision as to whether uh, or not he's going to remove Fonnie Willis from this case. This is not that order. What this is, though, is a victory for the defendants, including the former president. One of those charges, he was accused of trying to get the secretary of state to unlawfully overturn the election results here. The DA's office had said that it is a violation of the oath of office that he was soliciting from the secretary of state. But ultimately, the judge in this case ruling that the DA's office failed to include sufficient details that would allow these defendants to intelligently prepare for a future trial. So he's throwing them out. Uh, all of these counts have to do, as I mentioned, with a violation of an oath of office. We are still reading through this order. But as I mentioned, Jim, this is not uh, the ultimate decision as to whether or not Fani will be removed from this case. But in the short term, it is a victory for the defense attorneys and defendants in this case. Jim. Yeah, so Nick, uh, just to follow on that, for right now, Fani Will is still on the case. But a piece of this Georgia election subversion case looks like it has been dismissed. The rest of the charges are still there. So Trump and his uh, alleged co-conspirators there in Fulton County, not out of hot water by any stretch. No, they're not. In fact, the judge went out of his way to say this does not mean that the indictment is dismissed. He wrote that in his order just a, a short time ago, which was uh, you know, handed out. Uh, some of these counts, we'll just go through them. Uh, you know, one of the counts, as I mentioned, has to do with the solicitation of an oath of office for the Secretary of State. Another one has to do with uh, Trump and Meadows soliciting uh, the Georgia Secretary of State to violate his oath of office on January 2nd, 2021, by requesting or importing uh, him to unlawfully influence or certify election results. All of them, as I mentioned, Jim, have to do with the violation of the oath of office. But the judge ruling here in this case that the DA's office just really did not provide enough details about what that oath is that they were allegedly violating. So he's deciding to throw these charges out. Jim. All right. A fascinating development. Uh, Nick Valencia, thanks for staying on top of it. As always, we appreciate it. Uh, CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig joins us now. Ellie, what do you make of this? Well, Jim, this is an undeniable setback for the district attorney. Not the entire indictment, but six of the 40 counts have now been dismissed. And here's why. It's important to understand. Georgia state law has this sort of unusual law that says it's a crime to solicit, to ask a public official to violate his official oath of office. And as Nick just laid out, there are six counts in this indictment that say Donald Trump and other defendants asked various members of the Georgia Senate and the Georgia legislature and the Georgia Secretary of State, other public officials, to violate their oath to the Constitution by essentially swinging the election. But what the judge says here is, you prosecutors, you have to say what part of the Constitution. The judge says there are hundreds of provisions in the U.S. Constitution and in the Georgia State Constitution. And the purpose of an indictment is to give defendants notice so they know what they're defending against. And you can't just say, well, you tried to violate the Constitution. The judge says what you have to say is what specific provisions of the Constitution, what specific sections of the Constitution. That's not in the indictment. Therefore, the judge says those charges are legally unfounded and now they're dismissed. And so, Ellie, I mean, for the folks at home, Nick Valencia brought up uh, the, the part of this where Trump uh, pressured the Georgia Secretary of State to uh, sort of throw out that election victory for Joe Biden in the state of the Georgia. Does that get lifted out of the case? Is that still a part of this case? What does that mean? It is still part of the case, that okay. particular act, that phone call between Donald Trump and Brad, Brad Raffensperger, where Trump asks him to just find 11,780 votes. We've all heard it many times. Yeah. That is still part of the case. That phone call is still part of the case. There are other charges in the case that squarely relate to that phone call. For example, the first count in the indictment, which is the very broad racketeering count, will still include that conduct. There are other fraud counts that would still include that conduct. So I don't think this ruling changes the type of evidence that the DA is going to be able to introduce, but it does knock out some of the charges. And look, it, it's embarrassing for prosecutors. It, it's a screw up by prosecutors when you bring a charge and then a judge throws it out before it even goes to trial. Well, and, and that leads me to this question, Ellie, because there was so much was made of Fonnie Willis and her handling of this case and the hearings that we saw play out on live television was such a spectacle. Does this bolster uh, in the judge's mind the idea that perhaps the 
Fonnie Willis should not be handling this case, or is that a step too far? It should not bolster the conflict of interest argument. I think these are and should be seen as two entirely separate questions. The question in the decision that we just got is, is the indictment properly constructed? Were these charges properly put before the grand jury and are they sustainable? And the judge said with respect to six of the charges in this case, again, not all of them, but just six, no, they were not properly brought. There is an entirely separate question pending where we're waiting for a ruling any day now where the judge has to decide whether the DA has a financial or other conflict of interest relating to her relationship with the outside person brought in to be the lead prosecutor here, Nathan Wade. Those should be completely different questions and completely different considerations by the judge. And Ellie, I mean, the other question I had in my mind, and maybe Nick Valencia could help us on this question as well, this does not bode well for this case starting uh, in a timely fashion. I mean, this potentially could be another delay in the case Theoretically, well, I guess you, I guess you could look at it the other way and say, well, now we only have to deal with 34 counts instead well, okay. of 40. But <laughs> That's true. this case, yeah, I mean, look, just looking at it pragmatically, but yeah. this case is not going to get tried to verdict before the November 2024 election. There's just no way. Even the DA is currently asking for an August 2024 trial start date. It takes the DA months to even pick a jury. We there's another racketeering case in Georgia, high profile, but not this high profile that took them, I think eight or nine months to pick a jury. So there's just no realistic way that this case gets tried all the way to a verdict before November uh, and the election. Yeah, and I guess one thing that we need to look out for is uh, the district attorney, Fonnie Willis, and her reaction to all of this. I, I, I mean, everybody remembers all too well the way she responded to that hearing about whether or not she should stay on the case. And she uh, famously said, I'm not the one on trial here. The, the former president and all those co-defendants are on trial here. I mean, this this is getting to be I mean, this is going to be a, a very tough, uh, fought out case uh, when it finally gets, uh, you know, to court and in front of a jury. Yeah, there have been several screw ups, frankly, by the D.A. throughout the history of this case. Uh, going back to the investigative phase, the D.A. got herself disqualified from a small piece of the case because she created a political conflict of interest. The judge who was overseeing the grand jury removed Fonnie Willis from the case. Uh, we've seen Fonnie Willis make public statements in the church and elsewhere that have now been called into question that I think violate the ethics uh, of prosecutorial uh, rules. And now we've seen six case, six of the charges thrown out of the case. And unlike the conflict of interest issue, this does go to the charges against the defendants. This does go to the indictment itself. And there is still a case. The lead charge, the racketeering case, is still in place. But this is a setback. All right. Uh, but as Nick Lindsay was saying at the top of this segment, uh, the whole case is not thrown out. Obviously, much of the case, the bulk of the case moves forward. Ellie Honig. Uh, thanks, as always, for breaking it down for us. We appreciate it.